So we're in simple linear regression, and uh, we imagine that we've been able to create this best linear fit using Gauss's method of least squares. Um, so we succeeded there, and let's imagine that we also checked our model assumptions, and they turned out to be fulfilled. And um, we've checked that there is a significant relation between x and y. We've tested the intercept here. It's a significant. Uh, it's significantly different from zero, and we have a slope here which is significantly different from zero. So, and we check the uh, coefficient of determination. That's satisfying as well. So we can check this one out. And what's left now is to actually use the model. We'd like to use the model to make predictions. And if we look at our pH example here, then we have pH 1 here, 2, 3, and 4, something like that. And we would like to, to know what would be the yield expected? What yield would we expect if we conduct our experiment at pH level 2.3? In other words, what does our model predict that the yield will be? So let's just change the color here. Um, well, a first step would be to read off from the model what yield is the expected. So I'll call this one um, x naught, and and this one would then be y naught. Um, but we want to do better than that because we know that if we went out and collected data again doing experiments at different pH levels, we'd get another set of data points and we'd, we'd get another regression line here. Hopefully it wouldn't differ too much, but it probably wouldn't be the same line. And if we did experiment a third time, we'd get a third line. So, uh, this is a, this is a prone to statistical error. So giving just one number here um, is probably not enough. We'd like to give like an interval and saying, well, this is the interval that our model predicts the yield to be in with, say, 95% confidence. Because this line that we see here is really, it's really a matter of um, a statistical distribution. So the line represents the most likely or ex the, the, the expected outcome, but that's not to say that it's the only outcome we could get. So what we re really like would be a, an interval. And this video is concerned about, uh, concerned with what we call a confidence interval of the mean. So we like to compute the, the mean response at pH level 2.3 and not just the mean response but an interval. So it's some interval here within which the mean response of y, given that we're doing the experiment at x naught 2.3 pH, um, what interval would that mean response be in with 95% confidence? What do I mean by mean response? Why, why mean response? Well, what we actually mean is Let's say we did this experiment um, 10 times or 100 times at level pH 2.3. And then we took the average of the yields of those 100 experiments. That mean would be in this interval with 95% confidence. So we're not trying to predict one outcome from the experiment. We're trying to predict the mean outcome 
of the experiment at pH 2.3. So it's a little abstract. You have to get your head around that. So the next thing is, how do we compute this interval? Well, um, it goes like this. The center of the interval is the model prediction for the mean of y at x naught. So that's just this actually is the same number. So it's whatever the model predicts. So we just beat that off the graph. And then we had to add and subtract, subtract some um, um, variation here. It's a T quantile at whatever confidence level we've chosen. And it has N minus two degrees of freedom. And that should be multiplied by the standard error of that mean predicted by the model. So that's the shape of the confidence interval. Now this thing here, we know what this quantile look like, looks like, but this thing here is new, and we compute it like, like this. It's the square root of the variance estimate multiplied by 1 over n plus x naught minus the mean of x squared divided by the sum squared deviation of the x um, data points, the, the x values. That's how we compute it. We won't derive this equation. Uh, maybe I'll do it in a different video, but for now that's fine. And uh, let's see if we can do this in Excel. Um, so here we have our example with the pH levels and the, and the yield. And we did the statistical analysis here. We have the graph here. And as you can see, there is a, a slope of minus 1.68 and we have an intercept here. Um, I'll just remove this, we don't need this. Um, so let's try to compute a confidence interval for the mean. First of all, I'll, I'll write my pH level of interest. That was 2.3. And um, then we need what I could call mu hat. And what I mean by mu hat, that's um, this number here, the center of the interval. And that's really just the model prediction. Um, so I'll take the intercept here plus the slope multiplied by x naught. So that's just, it's the same as reading off this number here on the y-axis. So maybe I should write it here. This number here is... Um, beta naught plus beta one times x naught. So we're just putting the x naught into the model, our regression model. And um, then we need to compute the standard error of mu hat. And you saw that was uh, that this formula over here, this one here. So we take the, maybe I can minimize a little bit. This is not really working out for me like that. So we take the square root in Danish KVROD of the variance estimate and the variance estimate is as usual <clears throat> the means the sum mean squared here in english this would be called um sum square 
um, or mean sum error, I believe. That's the usual term for this number here. And that's the one we use for the error estimate. So back to the formula, the square root of this number here multiplied by 1 divided by well, we have 20 observations. We have the number of observations here plus x naught minus the mean, in English average, Danish mean. And we take the mean of the x values over here, like that. Um, close the bracket, square it, and divide by the <clears throat> deviation squared, D-E-V-S-Q in English, in Danish S-A-K, D-E-V-S-Q in English, and we mark the x values again, close the bracket, Close that bracket and close the last bracket. So this is the standard error on the mean response at pH level 2.3. Notice that this standard error depends on what pH value we've chosen to look at. I'll get back to that. And then we're ready to compute. I write it here. Um, the confidence interval lower uh, bound. So that's the uh, mu hat. I'm using this equation now. Minus the t quantile, so I'll use t inverse. And if I want to do the 95% uh, interval, then I'll write 0.975 here. And the degrees of freedom, well, that's, I'll just write 20 minus 2, and then multiply it by the standard error, which we just computed before, this one. So that gives us a lower bound, and the uh, upper bound, well, that's almost the same, so I'll see if I can copy this formula here and paste it in here and change the minus to a plus like that so that tells us that if i conduct the experiment um, a lot of times at ph level 2.3 then i will find a mean response so that's a mean yield which is in this interval here with 95% confidence. I said before that the uh, <clears throat> confidence interval it depends on what value of x that I that I um, choose. So and you can see that from the formula here because the, the standard error depends on x uh, x naught. So what that means is, and I'll choose another color for that, green one, that means that when I'm close to x bar here, um, the mean of the x values, so that would be somewhere in the middle here. When I'm close to the center of my x values, then I have a small confidence interval. Maybe I should mark it just as a as a bar. But as I move away from the center of the x observations here, then my confidence interval becomes wider and wider. Also if I move away to the other side here, I'm exaggerating right now, but otherwise you wouldn't be able to tell 
the difference. So the confidence interval becomes wider and wider the further away I get from the center of my uh, the center or the mean of my x sample. And that's just a consequence of statistics, basically.